Okay, everybody. Um, thank you for keeping your um, microphones muted. I don't have any background noise today, which I like. Um, all right, so today's our, our wrap up uh, for uh, this class. It seems to go by very quickly. Um, five weeks is hardly enough time to cover everything and uh, it's the nature of online classes. But I did want to say, um, first and foremost, thank you for participating um, uh, and thank you for, for uh, submitting your projects on time. Uh, I saw some great projects and um, so I'm very happy about that. Um, a lot of you um, had questions uh, about submitting this week or when the deadlines are. I'm not exactly sure when the um, uh, cutoff is for uh, submitting work. Uh, generally, I think they want you to submit it the week of. As long as the work is coming in, I will grade it. Um, I don't tend to uh, grade for late things if you have something in your life going on or whatever. And so I hope that you'll excuse me if I don't get back to you right away with some of the emails, which um, I was a little bit late on. So uh, uh, forgive me on that. Uh, I try to get back to everybody as soon as possible, but uh, sometimes uh, life gets in the way or and so forth. So um, I do appreciate all the um, uh, participation. And, uh, and today, um, is, a, is a great day to sort of uh, wrap up and ask any questions you might have. Uh, so um, I'm going to open the floor for questions at, at this time. And then I hope that uh, some of you will um, share your projects with, um, with the other students. And I have a list of people that I'd like to call on. Um, and uh, if you were able to, then, um, um, you know, that'd be great. So let's go ahead and uh, open up um, the discussion for any kind of questions, either related to the project or anything in general as far as the class goes. Anybody? Okay. Chris, you have a question? Uh, no, I just joined. Oh, okay. Your microphone's on, so I saw. <laughs> That's okay. So, okay, great. Well, then if nobody has any questions, I hope that you guys, um, I, I see a bunch of you out there um, that I'd like you to share your projects with the group. Are you all allow, um, able to share from your computer or is it that I have to share your, your uh, presentations? I'm not exactly sure how it works on your end. I think that you have to share it because the only option I saw was submitting. Okay, okay, no problem. Well, I, I can see my screen a share screen button, but it's I don't know screen. how it Yeah, I don't know what that means. Yeah. So basically if you have a program open you can share screen and then just open and it'll give you an option to open uh, one of the applications that's open on your computer. And so then your screen will um, populate that, that uh, screen. Uh, so they could show it through that, through that way, like right now. Yeah. And does anybody want to try? Cause it'll just be a small window. I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, if it's okay, um, uh, Jody, will you allow me to um, share your project? Yes. Go right ahead. Okay. Let me do that then. I can't do it on my end. <laughs> That's fine. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna share yours, and uh, just give me a moment, everybody, while I open hers. Okay, let me see here. Share screen. Okay, oops. Wait a minute here. All right. 
Let's see. Got it. Did, can everybody see it? Yep. All right. So why don't you, Jody, go ahead and go through each one, and then you just tell me to um, change the slide, and I will. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Well, first off, I just, this is the opening page and it didn't carry through all my font effects, it looks like on this for some reason, but um, just trying to be more reflective of what our Western kind of out West cult culture is in our area history is what I was picking up on. Plus trying to be adventurous and the little clip art on my wine bottle that I made there is a piece of art of my son's. And um, so that's the first page. And I decided to go ahead and, and my business was called Rockerville. Sorry. Um, winery, a wine bistro and event pavilion. And then I've got a petite Syrah from Lake County that I'm using for my wine. Now you can go to the next page. There we go. Sorry about that. That's all right. And this is my wine label. And I went with just a single, um, label not front and back something a little bit different um i would maybe if i were doing something i'd play around a little bit more with it as far as making sure that i've got enough space i would maybe even do a little bit bigger label than that but i liked the look of it something different than what you see out on the market all the time and i just tried to do a tie in a little bit with the the wine itself i found out petite syrah was actually used back in the mining days in California. It was a wine that they, grape that they used um, to keep the miners um, liquored up. <laughs> 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 anyway, so I kind of tried to pull that little bit of history into my wine notes as well that I put on the bottle. And um, I've made wine labels before through my other job. And um, so this is kind of fun, just do something that I wanted to do and not have anybody else's input really. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. So this label is designed for a claret bottle? Yes. Yeah, so it's straight up and down. Right. Okay. <laughs> Just like the bottle that's shown in the front. Right. There it is. Okay. Should I move on? Yeah, go right ahead. Okay. And I just the production side of it i had a hard time being out here in the midwest getting people that want to talk to me and take me seriously so it took a little while to find somebody that was willing to give me some information for crush custom crush but i sourced my grapes out of lake county and um it was petite syrah petite syrah has got a history of being a great grape for um aging and i thought in this business it would be a good grape just for if you're starting out as a new business one that has a, a lot of shelf life to it and um, it's got a lot of tannins to it and it's got a lot of ageability so it, it's got a long time it it can be a little wild on the front side but I think if there's it's coming around in the wine production industry that it's it's um getting to be a better wine all the time and I particularly love Petite Sarah, so that's kind of why I picked it. Um, Bend a Bottle is the custom crush facility that I used, and they did an all-inclusive crush for me. And um, there were a few ed extra add-ons that I did, but uh, otherwise they were able to do, I was able to rent oak barrels from them. And I decided to age the wine for 20 months. Um, the barrels were a second use, and they had a light toasting, and the type of yeast to use was a, a, a one that brought out kind of enhanced the flavors, smoothed it out, um, made it a little bit more silky on the palate, taming some of the, the tannins that are in Petite Syrah. And then um, Fruned Container and Supply had a good deal on bottles and corks and caps. And so I just kind of went with something that was not very high, not real expensive, but trying to keep the price down a little bit on the wine itself. And the because it wasn't cheap shipping it to South Dakota. <laughs> yeah. And then I did a shipping bid, kind of, I don't know if you've ever seen the show um, Shipping Wars, but it's a U-ship thing where you can get people to bid on your shipping. Yeah. And I, I looked into that and I got a couple people to bid on that for me. And so that was kind of fun to check out and see how that worked. And then I went with Maverick Labels and that's where I came up with the um, five and a quarter by three and an eighth inch um, label and did a horizontal design on that with a matte litho paper with matte print and um, so then you can hit the next slide and then this was my wine brand cost spreadsheet and um, 
I was able to get my grapes for $1,600 a ton, and they were not very far from the crush facility, so they threw in the, the <coughs> transport of the, the grapes to the crush facility in that price, which was pretty awesome. And then um, I was able to get that all-inclusive custom crush for, oh, it looks like about, read my writing here, $3,430 a ton. <laughs> And the winemaking, I was able to add on a little bit of extra things to it in the process of making the wine, an extra, um, some extra lab work, and I was able to um, have them do a little bit more to the wine <coughs> it's through time over the 20-month period. And then um, having the shipping I got, I got $1,199 for the shipping from California to South Dakota on that used ship. Um, I was able to rent those barrels for $800 or a barrel. And so with all, I had to have eight barrels. And so I um, was able to get those for 6,400, which was about equivalent to buying barrels. If, if I were doing it, I probably would be making my wine and making, aging my own wine and would have purchased the barrels. But when they're doing it for me, that worked pretty good. And that included the 20 months of aging in the price of the custom crush too. So that was a, a good thing. And I did my own design on my label and ordered it myself, so that was no cost. And um, I've listed again all the places I got everything from. And um, I ended up my net profit was uh, $29,752.18. And I guess you can go to the next page. And this just gives you the story of my narrative of what I did in the process. and. Finding my location, um, we're tucked in the Black Hills of South Dakota near Mount Rushmore. And so found this spot that's kind of halfway between our big city of Rapid City, which is nothing in comparison to California, but it's, um, and then the, up in the hills where Mount Rushmore is and all the activities and things are at. And so that's where I decided to base my business out of. And it's a great, I mean, about 3 million people pass through there in the, in the mostly the summer months. We've got a lot of different activities, so it's kind of a place that draws people in from all over. And I tried to tie it in the, the little town that it was in, that I put my business in. It was an old mining camp, and then it became kind of a, a kitsch tourist town in the 50s. I went there when I was a kid in the 70s, panned for gold there when I was a kid, so I thought I'd bring that flavor back with a, some sluice boxes, draw people in, make it interesting, and also turning it into an event center to bring people around. Um, and then that ties in with the petite Syrah and the mining theme, trying to, that kind of pulls the story into the wine. And then also um, where I went and I got those grapes was from that bin to bottle in Napa um, for the crush and make wine making. Um, the progression of the wine started pressing the grapes with enough time to get enough of the inky color, but not too heavy of tannins. Um, I um did that second run on the American oak and aged it for 20 months. Um, for bottling, I chose an antique green dimpled Bordeaux wine bottle with a standard um, natural tapered one inch cork, no imprint on the cork, and then a gold shrink capsule embossed with a, a grape imprint on the top. Um, the labels reflect the outdoor adventures for the picture, um, placed a, the label on the bottle and just kind of did it, for a first time run, I figured I wouldn't put a ton of money into the label, so that's why I did that. Um, and I guess that kind of covers everything that I decided. I'd have it up and ready and running for after aging it and bringing it here four months of it, kind of letting it cellar for a while, settle down, um, and then it'd be ready to go for the summer season of May of 2019. And that's it. Great. Well, thank, thank you. you for letting uh, sharing that with us. And um, I, I just wanted to make a couple of comments about sure. um, how I liked. Um, I, well, you know, I liked that you did a mock up of the bottle, and um, it was thorough in your quotes and everything, and uh, well thought out. So, um, you know, thank you for for participating. I I, I really do appreciate it, and I think. Um, you know, it, it, it kind of goes outside the box a little bit because you're in um, in an area we, where we don't think of um, um, selling wine too much as a um, um, as a 
you know, out of market type of place. So I, I think that's our secondary market, they would call it, or a tertiary market, South Dakota. So I think that that's a, a really interesting as well. And um, yeah, so what, here's a question for you. After sure. doing this um, and putting this all together, what is the likelihood that you will execute this project? Uh, at this time, probably not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and why? Um, well, I just transitioned from being in working in two different wineries and being a wine club <coughs> manager and doing all that. And I decided I want to try to do something for myself. So right now I wouldn't have the bank of the startup of a winery by myself. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, all right. Cause it looks like you need about 30 grand. Yeah, and, I would at least that. <laughs> and then the place to sell it from. <laughs> right, exactly. Cool. Well, thank you. Um, let's see. Who should I pick on next? Is this William B or William T? I only see one William there. William T. B or T? T. Aha. Uh -huh. Would would you like to present yours as well? I can try. Okay. Thank you. Then I'm gonna go ahead and uh open yours and have you share it. Okay. Because it is also a little bit um uh different from um uh you know coming from a European perspective. So okay. let me just open it. And let me share. Um, where is it? Here it is. And I'm going to do that. Okay. Go for it. Okay. So um, my project was uh, was done in uh, in Ticino, which is uh, southern Switzerland, on the border with Italy. Uh, there, the, the main grape uh, grown in, uh, in that area is, uh, is Merlot, and uh, most of the consumption of local wine is, uh, is basically only Merlot, so people drink only that kind of wine when it comes to internal production. Uh, the production of the, of, of the World Swiss doesn't cover the consumption, so uh, usually it's not very a big problem to, to sell the wine you produce there. Because uh, the, the personal consumption uh, is um, one of the highest of Europe, <coughs> and uh, the production is very, very low according to that. Uh, so, from the, um, I would say, market point of view, uh, it's not very dynamic, uh, a dynamic area. So, basically, uh, it's not worth to go and, uh, and try to, to find something new there because uh, most of the time, People just try, but they, they go back to their own uh, old school, let's call uh, Merlot. So the, the breeding for them is, uh, is more on Bordeaux style, and uh, mostly all the wineries produce uh, Merlot in a Bordeaux style. Uh, no one really tries to go out of the, of the path. And that's because basically it kind of can be a problem to, to sell it, because people don't, uh, don't, uh, don't try to to go for something different, which is uh, uh, if it is produced uh, in, uh, in Tichy. So that's, uh, that's why in my project I choose also to, to go for, uh, <clears throat> for an Merlot. Also the production of grapes in the area is like 85 to 90 percent uh, mainly Merlot. So it will be even more difficult to find grapes to, to start a project like this if it's not Merlot. Okay. Uh, for the kind of wine I wanted to, to produce, I thought about the Reserva, which for us uh, means uh, at least 18 months of aging before uh, going to the market. And uh, this is because, uh, first of all, is the, um, the most common wine uh, drunk in a restaurant. And also because <clears throat> there is a very different perception from the client point of view when it comes to pricing. Uh, if you go for a reserva, you can charge uh, prices from 27 to 37, this to the, to the restaurants. And um, if you go for a normal, uh, normal um, inox, uh, inox uh, sorry, uh, if you go for a normal production, so only in, in inox, uh, 
the prices are very low. We go to from 17 to 25. So since we had only three tons of, uh, of grapes to work on, I thought that uh, with this kind of um, segment of pricing, we would be able to, to have a higher income. Also because um, once I got the prices from the from the uh, pension facility, I saw so that there was not a huge difference uh, on, uh, on the price for the producing uh, between the, the, two, the two options. So that's why I chose to, to go for the, for the reserve, which in my case was um, 12 months of aging in uh, French oak barrique and uh, six months of aging in bottle. That's because, uh, before, going to, before going to the market. The, the price in Swiss of the, the price of the grapes in Swiss is uh, set by the, um, the state. So every region, every year, uh, pick up the price, the average price, and then you pay according to that. And in these prices included also the, um, the taxes. So that was not very, very hard for me to, to find it. I just had to, to send an email and they replied me last year that this was the price. Now for 2017 is not set yet. Uh, I think it's gonna come in the end of the month. Then what else? One little problem I had with the, with the um, spreadsheet was that uh, for us the taxing method is quite different. Uh, you don't pay taxes on the, on the volume of, uh, of wine that you produce. You pay only on the net income you have at the end of the year. Uh, so I had to make a little adjustment to that. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Big deal. Um, what else? <clears throat> all the um, all the process of the winemaking included for us also the um, also the top, uh, closing, labeling, um, packing, and everything. Everything is uh, included in the offer I got from the, um, the offer I got from the custom cash facility. Uh, so there is no problem of um, logistics or uh, I don't know. Even going and choosing the, the cork uh, or, uh, or whatever, the, the custom cash facility works with the with their suppliers, and you just have to to choose to pick between the their offer. So okay, they, I and you already the guys in the, in that custom cash facility, so I just had to to go there and like, have a meeting, like the fast one to choose uh, which one to use. That's uh, that's it. Great. Well. Um... Yeah, so thank you for sharing that. Um, I thought it was very interesting presentation and that's why I asked you to uh, share that with us because I think, um, you know, the approach is a little bit different, but uh, certainly it was uh, well thought out and um, I like how you included the maps um, where, where the um, grapes were uh, being produced, where the custom crush facility was. And it seemed very well thought out. So um, thank you very much for sharing that with us. So, um, and, and I'm gonna ask you kind of the same questions. After doing this project, um, what is the likelihood that you might execute this project? Well, actually, honestly, um, that's not what I'm looking for right now because I'm, I'm uh, changing position in the company I'm working for, so, it's not exactly what I want. Also because um, I think teaching is not very, teaching is the other way I, way I thought about the project. It's not very dynamic in uh, understanding these kind of things. No? So they, they are kind of uh, old school, I would say. So they prefer to, to see like uh, the old family that is working there for uh, 40 years. And so on. when they see uh, this kind of virtual stuff, they're not ready yet, I guess. So maybe it's not the right time. It is my point of view. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's great. Um, I, um, it's uh, that that's you know I just like to 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 hear what people are thinking. So okay, um, Chris, I was wondering if you would be able to share your project with us. Yes, I can once I got mute. <laughs> okay, very good. Let me let me open it. Okay. Oops. Sorry, I have a hard time. Um, 
with this program too. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't get it to uh, tonight. Show myself, so I don't know what you guys see. So <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> I have clothes on tonight. <laughs> Good. Well, and, you know, I think um, well, you know, I think it's funny because I see everybody, and uh, I don't know if you guys see everybody, and uh, you know. I think one night Alex was dancing, somebody's drinking wine, somebody's in a restaurant. It's, it's very um, entertaining. <laughs> and here I am in my, um, my, my living room. But I'm, I'm blacking myself out today because, uh, no, yeah. Anyways, all right, Mr. Mangler, go for it. And I will just tell so me we, when uh, to do, tell me when to um, change the slide, okay? Right, so you see my logo go right to, you can go right to the next slide. So this actually, uh, this label is actually a, uh, this is a TTB approved label uh, that took a lot of back and forth with the, uh, with the TTB to become approved. Um, I thought it was interesting to discuss a little bit because the label on the left, which is obviously what anybody would consider the front label is actually the back label because uh, there's no wine information on the label. So I had a lot of back and forth with the government um, and I learned a lot about what can go on a label and percentages of grapes and this and that. And I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit more later. But uh, you know, this particular wine is kind of our signature wine. It's a field blend of 18 different varietals. Um, and it's virtually impossible to list all of those varietals on a wine label um, and leave it with the government. So I kind of gave up a little bit. So you can see the front label. I wanted it to be clean and kind of. Uh, convey that it's a premium wine and it's a it's primarily a Zin plus Primitivo is about 84 percent and I'm trying to convince people to spend a lot of money on this wine and Zinfandel I didn't think could command that premium price so I didn't want to label anything and keep it really clean and um, and exclusive on the front label so you see the back label uh, which is really the front label that doesn't say anything about the varietals, and I'm going to put all that on my website. So I just call it red wine uh, from the Russian River Valley, um, and then describe to people more about the wine as we progress. So next, next slide. Uh, Chris, let me ask you a question. Um, what is the price point on this wine? Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Okay. So I was going to do uh, my original price point was forty-five. Um, and then after I got a lot of great feedback on the wine and people love the people who drink this wine really love it. So now I'm running with 48. Um, and for a, a winery that no one's ever heard of to pay $48 for Zinfandel, I thought would be a tough sell. Uh, so I decided to position it as just read is the name of my wife. Um, and you'll see later in the slides, it's just this, this cool block of gray. You go, uh, and this is a slide that I used, uh, in the, in the winemaking program at Davis, the viticulture program. So this is just Google Maps. Uh, so that's actually the vineyard uh, where I work. And this three quarter acre block of, uh, of grapes was available, it's about 600 vines. And you see the, um, you see the varietal, it's a 69% Zen, 14 Primitivo, 8% Alicante make up the bulk, 2% um, H Petit, uh, Syrah and Trousseau. And then another dozen, and that's um, it's really a fuel blend philosophy, and I love the approach. I love the vineyard. Um, I do a lot of the work myself. I did the, I did all the pruning this year myself. I did the trimming. I do the leafing. We picked it ourselves. And it's in case anyone's interested, it's a lot of work to pick three and a quarter tons of grapes uh, with the, with uh, three guys uh, start two o'clock in the morning. But it really makes it uh, a homemade house made wine. The next and slide. Are these um, are these grapes? Um, how are they trained? Are, are they California sprawl or head? Yeah, trained? it's it's kind of a, a a mesh between a California sprawl and a VSP. Uh, so it's all you know vertical shooting, um, you know double cordon, uh, you know, and there's so many different varietals. Even in this picture, you can see the vegetation difference in this random Google Map picture. So for example, yeah. You know, the Trousseau is 2% uh, Trousseau. I don't know anything about Trousseau, but I can find them in the vineyard really quickly. And they're so vegetative and highly productive and there's shoots growing everywhere. And it's a lot of work to, to trim them and leaf them. And they uh, really add a lot to the wine, I think. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's all over the map, this vineyard, this, this block. And this is uh, off 101? 
The 101 is right behind you there. Yeah. Um, so that's the 101 heading north uh, between uh, just south of the first exit to Healdsburg. Okay. So, yeah, so Good. this is just about a quarter of a mile south of Limerick Lane, uh, literally right there on the 101. Yeah. And what's, what's really special about Alicante Boucher? Can you tell everybody? Red, red flesh. Red <laughs> flesh, man. So, um, you know, Alicante is, uh, and I, you know, I took the winemaking certificate program at Davis, so I'm a wealth of useless wine trivia. Uh, so there, was, there was a point where Alicante was the most popular grape, you know, in the country because it's very thick-skinned, red-fleshed. So during Prohibition, the Napa Valley made tons of Alicante and shipped it east because people could make wine from grapes but couldn't buy wine. Um, so one of my winemaking objectives was to make a really uh, darkly colored, really red wine. Uh, so I love the Alicante in there, and I drove the acids down to enhance the color. Um, and even last year, we planted uh, ruby red, if you can imagine that. <laughs> uh, right. So, wow. And here's my, uh, my wine costing sheet, and um, everything except for... The labeling, I just became a legal winery from the TTB last week. So I've got 500 cases of Shiners, 135 cases of Rita, 150 cases, whatever, of Rita's Block. Um, so everything on this sheet is an actual cost except for, um, uh, except for the, uh, the labels, which I estimated from MC Label. So, you know, at, uh, at nine, ten bucks a bottle, you know, this is expensive. <laughs> this is expensive wine. Um, yeah. And... You know, yeah, the bottles I, I used uh, from Ma Silva, some really cool, very heavy, funky bottles. I'm really trying to position this as a premium wine. Um, and even with my deal with the winemaker, uh, with the grower, I should say, where we, you know, we pick the wine, our, we pick the grapes ourselves and make the wine ourselves on site. Still, it's, uh, uh, this, this, is, this is not cheap wine. Um, so that's kind of what uh, drove our price point. But everything else other than the labels, that's my actual real dollars. Right. Chris, Chris, I had a quick question for you. Um, you said that the, I, I'm having a hard time reading the full just because it's so small. Um, you said that the cost, the total cost to make was nine or ten dollars a bottle. Yeah. Yeah. And, right and you're here. saying that that's expensive or just the difference between the cost and what you're, the price point that you're selling at? Yeah, that's a lot of money. So my, my, you know, my experience tells me a lot of most guys for these types of wines, you know, the price point and Aaron, you have a lot more experience. So please jump in. But what I've, what I've experienced is the price point for this small production is between five and seven X of, of my direct cost. So if I, if I really wanted to price this wine fairly, I'd go to 70 bucks. Okay. And, you know, Cause every, cause no one, no one pays retail. Right. So you know, at, at, you know, 10 bucks a bottle all in, you know, this is an expensive wine to produce. Um, and I, uh, you know, that's why I'm only at 48 bucks a bottle and I haven't sold any wine yet. Actually, I sold one bottle. So, so it's kind of an accomplishment, but it's, uh, you know, there's, uh, as I think we've seen, by the way, which I love this course and I love the whole program. I think it's going to be awesome to help crystallize this. And I'm feeling it real world. You know, there's lots of overhead, lots of costs in the wine business. So, you know, if you end up with a 20% cost of goods, you know, I don't think that's crazy for us. A gallo is probably going to be different, but this is expensive. This is expensive wine. Yeah, I would agree with you. And, um, and that, you know what, thank you for sharing that because um, I think, um, you know, somebody who's, who's really doing it, um, you know, understands those costs and those effects. I mean, we say, oh, it's only $9.28 a bottle to produce, but that's actually quite a bit of money. That's um, a lot of money. Yeah. And, um, and I think, you know, you're 48 and, and it was well thought out, you know, your pricing and you're right. I think um, there's not very many Zinfandels in the upper 40s. I can think of maybe two in our region. Uh, probably William Sellium, which you have to be on a list to buy, or Raffinelli, which you have to make an appointment to get. So, you know, there's, you know, there's very few Zinfandel producers that can command that kind of dollars. There's probably a few others, of course, but yeah. But um, thanks for explaining uh, the Alicante because um, I, I, I love uh, um, 
I love that grape. So it's, uh, it's always fun. So I'll go to the next slide. Well, this is just a big narrative. And I, you know, it, I have two, you said under 500 words. I think I'm at like 470. Um, <laughs> but basically the next two slides are that, you know, I, I, I've been here in wine country. Uh, I really just wanted to start to make wine. Um, I tried to, uh, you know, divorce myself from this concept of, wow, if I make really great wine, people will come and buy it. Um, so I wanted to learn how to make wine, but figure out how to sell the wine. So uh, I, I started out in the UC Davis winemaking program online, which is an awesome program. I learned a lot about making wine. I found a guy just through visiting vineyards that would be willing to tolerate my ability to not work full time <laughs> and randomly worked the harvest, uh, loved it, uh, talked to my family, uh, despite their advice, decided to make wine and, you know, decided to go slow, you know, start, start low and go slow. So, uh, we, you know, making 500 cases of wine focused on my premium wine, this Rita's block, this, this, uh, the three quarter acre block. Uh, I use my philosophy is Sonoma County only all American, everything. I only use American Oak. Um, I kind of taste the wine. Uh, and by the way, I give kudos to not only the, the Sonoma State program from a business perspective, but the folks at UC Davis is the ultimate and the best, uh, you know, people to teach winemaking and learning this. And after just taking, you know, a half a dozen online courses, um, you know, I step into any commercial production facility and, you know, people think I know what I'm doing. Um, and now this is my uh, fourth year, third vintage for myself. Uh, the wine tastes really great. Um, and that and that's uh that's about it awesome thanks chris i appreciate it so um and i don't have to ask you the question whether you plan on doing this or not because um uh you're doing it <laughs> well to put it in, so to put it in perspective for the group i've got uh about 500 cases of wine sitting in a warehouse i just got legal uh my cash money dollars in is about 100 grand wow well, yeah. there you go. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, I think we had a couple of people drop off. Um, let's see. How about, because um, I know some of you haven't submitted yet, so I'm just going off the ones that kind of got submitted already today. Um, but um, Akosha, would you be willing to share this evening? Um, there we go. Um, I figured out the mute button. <laughs> yeah, I can mute you or unmute you too. So there you go. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll give it a shot. You give it a shot. All right. Shit. So <laughs> let me uh, let me pull it up here. Okay. So I got to go to my folder. Hold on one second. Um, And then after uh, Akosha here, then um, I'll, I'll open the floor up to whoever would like to go next. Uh, where is yours? I know I saved it somewhere, didn't I? Da -da -da. Hmm. Where is it? Uh, hold on one second. Hold on one second. I can find it. I just um, let me um, let me just go to. I don't know why it's not in here, but da, 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 da. I'll play the elevator music. Do, 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 do. I don't know. Hold on one second, everybody. Patience. Here we go. Let me 
Everything circles. Someone watching this on YouTube is going to be like, oh my God, get on with it. Right? Okay, hold on. Um, I'm going to share the screen now. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Okay, where am I? Okay, here we go. Here we go. So, um, I, I didn't have a chance to introduce myself in the beginning because I couldn't get my my uh, speaker to work. Um, I'm a Kata and I live in Calgary. And so when I started this project, I didn't realize it could be a Canadian um, location. I was kind of following, following the uh, instructions there. So this is completely fabricated. I am a tax accountant. I have no idea anything to do with the wine industry um, other than that I enjoy drinking it. <laughs> um, my husband and I are sort of planning for our future. Um, what do we want to do next? We want to go to the, uh, you know, the, the rat race of living in the city. So we're looking at moving um, into BC to get some more wine experience and I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do, but um, just kind of get involved and so uh, maybe do our own brand and, and that's this, that's why this project was good because we learned that we could do something like that through a, a custom crush facility um, and or um, buy our own winery is kind of a, a, a big goal. I don't know if we can do it, but we're going to try and get some experience and see if we can do that. So so this is, um, I don't even know how, how realistic it is, but uh, we'll go through the slides and and have fun with it because it's more of a fun fun project for us. Um, so we went with a very casual um, feel. We we love the mountains. We love to snowboard, and so we're going with this sort of uh, freewheeling. We're going to put uh, the same passion that we do into snowboarding into our winery, and so we can share our wine with other people like us. So that's basically. Um, our thought, and we'll do some funky. Oh, whoa. Oh, sorry. You want me to go back? <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, the picture got all crazy. So, so we went with a Pinot because we um, we selected Washington because it's, um, we're, we've been trying some Pinots from, from the area and we really enjoyed it. So, as I said, we're uh, it's fabricated. So, we thought we uh, we selected a custom crush facility uh, in Walla Walla. Uh, Pinot Noir from Rattlesnake Hills and thought we would um, try and sell it uh, downtown Seattle. <laughs> I know that uh, a lot of people questioned uh, cost on that and I, I get that it would be very expensive but we thought that would be a really fun thing to do is to have the urban winery. So um, yeah, so then there's the Artifacts Custom Crush Facility. Um, they do everything except for the actual wine making. So um, we're actually taking courses on on making wine, so assuming uh, we would do that part. And then if you wanna to go to the next slide. Uh, just doing some research on um, bottle selection for Pinot. So we went with the burgundy shape, um, the antique green with the high UV protection, um, a dimpled bottle just to give it, um, you know, we're going with that $25 mark. So we, we wanted to have a more quality um, looking bottle, like a heavier uh, quality bottle. So we went with that. And then if you go to the next slide, uh, we decided to go with a cap. Um, just again, based on the research that we were doing. Um, and we've, we've had a few um, Pinots that in that, you know, 20, 25 to $30 range, if you put a nice cap on it, um, Still, still had a good feeling of quality, and so, and also because we we didn't feel like we needed to age, you know, as long, so we went with the cap um, for cost reasons and for the cork cork paint issues as well. Yeah, uh, our cost summary is we we had trouble actually getting costs 
from any custom crush facility. I don't know if anybody else had that problem, but we had a ton of responses back. We, we ended up sending emails and calling all kinds of facilities because we couldn't get um, information out of artifacts. Um, and they were all like, no, you're too small, or no, I can't share costs with you. So um, this is a, a combination yeah. of costs that we sort of put together. So um, I think we came out at, yeah, 11 bucks a bottle, which is probably high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially, especially, yeah, so. Okay. Um, yeah. And then I think we have a label on there. Yeah, so we're going... Uh, as you can see, definitely not clean and simple and elegant, <laughs> like Chris. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then the fun, funky back. So yeah, just to go with our sort of snowboarding, snowy kind of, yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. I um, and I and asked you to share. I asked you to share because it was different from um, a lot of the other submissions, and I want to and and not saying different in a bad way, saying different because, um, you know, you're choosing grapes from Washington, um, you're doing a little bit more um, kind of appealing to a younger crowd. Um, so, uh, you know, I just, I thought that um, it was a nice approach and it was refreshing because I think we need to see everybody's sort of different range of work. And, um, and so I'll ask you, so, uh, is this something that you would um, consider doing in your life or not? You know, um, I was a little bit resistant to it at first, I guess, because we, we had planned, you know, to move to BC, but my husband is American, so we, ha we do have that option to go down to the States, and as we learned more about Washington, we actually, you know, kind of really liked it, so... It's definitely something that we are going to think about a little bit more. So we're definitely, I think, you know, um, we've decided that we are definitely going to get into the wine business. We just don't know exactly uh, what that looks like right now. So okay. definitely learned a lot in the course. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it's really good to have all the resources now to really sort of get a feel of what the business is like. And we, we just, uh, we were in... Um, the shoe swap which is in the interior of bc last week and we went to a winery and i talked to a guy there and sort of had a little bit of a a tour so yeah just just getting gathering our bearings and seeing if it's a realistic thing well just remember um trevor over there is from bc i don't know he's up in the yeah. upper upper uh corner while well, he just stepped away <laughs> that's not one of his kids run through but um remember he's up there and there's uh i don't know how much you know definitely use the uh, program as a networking tool and um, you know, oh, if you can. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, good. You. Well, thank you so much. Great. Um, yeah, thank you. Who else would like to share tonight that submitted? I've, I've, uh, I've uploaded all the, uh, how about Steve? Do you want to share Steve? Are you even there, Steve? I'm going to unmute yeah. you. Hello? I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Do you want to share? Sure. All right. All right. Let me uh, let me pull it up. Uh, let's see. Steve, Steve, Steve. All right. Let's okay, let me X out of this one. Share screen. And Ta -da. Okay, take us through it, Steve. Well, <laughs> I, I picked a name having to do somewhat with the area that it's in. And as you know, when you try to find a name that hasn't been used yet, it's a little bit difficult, uh, not just for wine, but for anything. So this was one that seemed appropriate and um, it also reflects the area. Uh, I am very poor with I had knew nothing about using PowerPoint, absolutely nothing. I'm terrible at it, and so are my graphics. So I used Word with this. Couldn't get exactly the pictures I wanted, but I picked something. This is Mount Shasta in the background, and it's in the area up where the winery will be. Uh, looked at, uh, there's a few different places that I bought grapes before. Lodi is one of them, 
and it seems to be a place where the grapes are good and the price is not too astronomically high, but uh, shipping is a factor. Um, I'm getting off track a little bit. This is the label right here and front label. And uh, I forgot who it was that said that he just got labeled. Maybe it was Chris, but he's absolutely right because when you start dealing with the TTB, they will find just about anything possible they can on why your label's not right. And the next time you send it in, you can get a different reviewer and he'll have, he or she will have different things that they don't like about your label. And they may even contradict some of what the first people said about your label. So anyway, it's really an experience. This one is not set up to scale or anything. It's just like, again, my graphics are poor, but I used Word, put something together, tried to have all the pieces on there, front and back. Um, you're required to have the warnings about all sorts of bad things that can happen to you, and it's official what you put on there. So and Steve, can I use support. this as your label label um, submission? Uh, what is my label? For your label uh, submission for the last week or whatever it was. <laughs> I'm going to... I'm just going to credit oh, you yeah, this yeah. one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's, you know, yeah, when I submitted last week, I didn't have a picture. Right, right. It was preliminary. So yeah. I'll, I'll consider this the final and I'll, I'll backtrack. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, as far as the, uh, the location goes, it's just a small rural town in Northern California. But uh, I did find out one thing that I thought was kind of cool. It's as far north as I think anybody's got a winery location right now in California. You can't get much farther north and not be in Oregon. So I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, what else did I say on here? Uh, the varieties I picked out a while ago, and they're my own preferences, but um, uh, the um, Cabernet Sauvignon, Tempranillo, Cab Franc. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of whites, I got a couple acres up there. It's not enough for a vineyard. But uh, I would like to try and grow something at a point. I've actually tried a few things up there already, but not being up in the area, they usually die in the winter because it gets too cold. And there's no one to really baby the vines along a little bit. They need to have a spray set up on them. But uh, a couple of them are supposed to stand up in the cooler weather, the Gewurzemeiner and also the Chardonnay might make it through. The new one I talk about, uh, I pronounce it Norette and it's a hybrid grape, uh, it might be pronounced Noré, I'm not sure that I've never heard anybody say it yet, but it's noted for having uh, been similar to deep, deep and dark, like a Cabernet Sauvignon type of a grape. So I'd like to get some of it going. You can actually buy it now back on the East Coast, but I haven't been able to get a hold of any yet. So what else? And, oh, I uh, had some fun with the spreadsheet. I wasn't exactly sure how to use it at first, but I think I'm a little different, maybe I, unless I missed some of the others, I put a labor factor in there too, because it's, even though we're dealing with a small batch right now, three tons, uh, I think it's important to put a labor factor in there because anything I look at doing needs to be sustainable. And sure. even if for a few months out of the year, unless you're doing all this yourself, yeah, you need some help. Um, as I don't have to, I'm just going to say it briefly. Everybody knows this. Everything you deal with is heavy. A full barrel weighs about 600 pounds. You have to lift it. You have to move it. You have to rack it. You bring your grapes in. And even if you ferment them in the bins that you bring them right off the field in, you know, the thousand pound bins, um, it's some work to move them around. It's some work to crush and de-stem. It's some work every day to punch them down. Um, and if you don't happen to have a carbon dioxide fan, you gotta move all the smell out. Even though you like the smell, you're in there too long in small quarters, it will knock you out. And and then when you have to, if you're done with that, you've gotta pre press them and put it in barrels and you just keep them moving. But it's a lot of work for a couple of months. So I put a labor factor in. And there's an economy of scale and I'm sure you, everybody that's worked with the spreadsheet notices it. You, the more grapes that you have, the more grapes you work with, you can actually bring your bottle price down and you can play around with your profit all you want. But you can actually, in my opinion, 
your economy is scaled, you've got a couple of people helping you work for a few months, you can easily process a lot of grapes, not just a few barrels, but a lot of them. Um, big factor, as you all probably noticed, is where do you get the money up front to fund all this madness? Because uh, the grapes that I've seen, I think someone mentioned, I think it was, uh, might have been Jody at first about getting some grapes about $1,600 a ton. I think that's pretty normal. Uh, I know on those wine, uh, the crush report we looked at, I saw some really cheap grapes on there. I've never seen them that cheap. Uh, so I think $1,600, 2000 a ton is probably a normal cost <laughs> for most of them. And anyway, this spreadsheet, I worked it out. Uh, what did I end up with about, um, I can't see my own stuff here right now, but it's uh, about 25 bucks a bottle. Is that what I have on there, Aaron? 25? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. high. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know, I know. But but look but look at the costs. I mean, yeah, I've got utilities sure. in there. I've got uh, labor. Um, I don't know. It's It seems to come out that way. And uh, Yeah. Know All right. Well... <coughs> Well, I, um, I wanted to in, um, invite you to uh, share because um, one, of the, one of the things that I thought was fascinating about your project was um, that you added a, a future story, um, you know, where the winery will be five years from today, and I'm on that side now. And um, uh, so I thought that that, that was interesting, and um, so I um, – so you know, I wanted to invite you to say something about it. So thank you very much, Chris, for, for sharing with us. And um, uh, I know that some of these, these programs aren't easy to work, but you did a fine job. So anyways, um, I guess, you know, we're getting to the uh, seven o'clock hour. Um, I would encourage you guys to, you know, take the next course. Um, uh, the second, you know, the second uh, um, uh, class in the series, Patrick Baker teaches that. He's um, he's quite a sales guy. So, you know, he's more on, um, he's definitely um, in, um, interested in sales. Um, I know him in the industry. I've run into him in a number of different capacities uh, over the years. Um, so, you know, check out his class too. Um, again, I want to thank you. And if you haven't turned in your stuff yet, then uh, try to turn it in as soon as possible. Um, I am going to be taking my computer uh, with me. I'm going to go on vacation next week up to Washington State. I'm going to leave tomorrow. So um, I will take my computer with me so I can deal with all that stuff. But everything that's been submitted has been graded. Um, if you see something that hasn't been graded, send me the link. That's my easiest way to get there because a lot of the discussion groups and things like that, sometimes I miss it or sometimes somebody will add a comment after I've gone through it. So it's, it's hard to navigate from, a, from my perspective, um, but not impossible. Um, so if I miss something, let me know. Um, if you're not... Um, uh, totally satisfied with your grade, you can email me privately, we can discuss it. Um, though I think if you turned in everything, um, you know, uh, grading was, it's more about participation and um, getting you the information that you need um, in order to start a wine business. So um, again, thank you so much for um, uh, joining this class and participating. Any more questions? Before we wrap uh, it up, Aaron, I just did want to ask you a question about the next course. Yeah. With the fee, do you know if there's um, any reduction with the early registration or anything like there was in the foundation course? Mm. Canadian dollars, you know, is much different. <laughs> for us American well, that's a great question. And I have to tell you, Trevor, I'm totally ignorant to the actual cost side of things. Um, you know, um, I've never taken a class online period. I've only taught them. And from that perspective, I guess I should probably find out in the future because, I mean, people are going to ask these questions. 
<clears throat> Aaron, I'll reach out to the Erin. She's been very good. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. She's she's the master. And then if there's any problems with uploading stuff, Leong. Um, I don't know. Some of you might have had emails with her. She's awesome. So um, I totally lean on her uh, for um, the internet stuff and you know uploading. And she, you know gets everything ready for me. And she also used to do the same thing for me when I taught for Vesta. Uh, so she's awesome. Um, so if you have any questions about that. Um, yeah, so that's, please uh, do the survey. They, um, you know, uh, that'll, um, that'll be important um, for the feedback on my performance and, you know, go ahead and be as harsh as you want, that's okay. Um, but, uh, that's, that's always a good thing to do as well. The survey monkeys don't take very long. So I think there's a link at the bottom of module five. So if you can do that, please do that. And Aaron, it's, I have a quick question just yeah. I want to, I, I, I can email it to you, but I couldn't find your email on the, I've looked on the module and I didn't see oh, it. Oh, okay. So it's Aaron, A-A-R-O-N at vinoptic, V-I-N-O-P-T-I-C dot com. Vinoptic is my consulting company. And um, you can also, I might as well plug my Facebook page. Um, I have some really interesting new projects coming up and I try to update, you know, Facebook once in a while. Um, but um, not only the business end of things, um, we're going to be doing some film things uh, around wine and exploring uh, wines of the world and so forth. So um, feel free to join me on Facebook as well. And that's Vinoptic, uh, V-I-N-O-P-T-I-C. And if you go to the uh, class page, it should be at the very top next to my picture, my email. So, um, you know, and if you have any questions, even in the future, uh, please go ahead and just email them to me. I'm totally open to um, corresponding and networking with all of you uh, now and in the future. So, hey, very, Aaron. Yeah. Real quick. Uh, Napa grapes at over $7,000 a ton compared with other grapes. Uh, and I've heard of some Napa grapes going for 35000 a ton. Uh, do you really taste the difference? Honest, just really. Um, yeah, absolutely, Steve. Um, there, there is a difference. <clears throat> and so, um, <clears throat> it just, um, it, 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 you know, there's different areas, <clears throat> different terroir, and um, there's better, there's better dirt in different places. It just, that's a, that's a fact. Now, to justify those prices, you're going to have to have a lot more um, vested in that project. So if you're going to buy from Andy Beckstoffer on Tokelon Dirt, you know, you're going to pay upwards of $20,000 a ton, but, you know, you're going to be able to sell that wine for a higher price too. And right. actually, he'll dictate at what price you'll pay um, sell that wine at. Ooh, yeah. Okay. So, yes. Thank you. So Dirt Matters. Okay. Okay. Any other questions before we sign off? Okay. No, but thank you for everything. Thank you, Jody. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Thank thanks, man. Have a good night, bro. All right. You guys have a good night. See you, you in the thank future. You. Okay. Take thank care. You.